in the lead-up to the Unite the Right rally on Saturday, August 12, 2017, the alt-right released the Charlottesville Statement the Friday before on their website. Do they have a point? Are they actually the Nazis and white supremacists the entire state media complex says they are? God, I love replying to lists. Let's do this. Race is real. Race matters. Race is the foundation of identity. So here we have confirmation. It is identity politics. On its face, it's not bad. The problem, and this is the same problem with feminism, Black Lives Matter, and other identitarian groups, it's becoming a supremacist group. I can't criticize the alt-right for this yet, but the potential always exists. Jews are an ethno-religious people distinct from Europeans. At times, they have existed within European societies without being of them. I don't know why they feel the need to include this. It's just a statement that the Jews are culturally and religiously distinct from whites, which I guess is fair. I guess Orthodox Jews would say the same. Nations must secure their existence and uniqueness and promote their own development and flourishing. The state is an existential entity and, at its best, a physical manifestation of a people's being, order, and will to survive. At its worst, the state is an insatiable engine of death and destruction. Any power you allow the state is power your worst enemies will use against you. The state doesn't exist to preserve culture. It doesn't care if you're black, white, brown, yellow, red. The only color they care about is green, yours specifically, being taken from you at gunpoint, and the color of the scales of your reptilian overlords. Spirit is the wellspring of culture, and politics is downstream of that. The alt-right wages a situational and ideological war on those deconstructing European history and identity. And now we are starting to get to their grievances. But it's not like there's any deconstruction of European history and identity that's going on, is there? Oh, crap. The founding population of the United States was primarily Anglo-Saxon and Protestant. By the Great War, a coherent American nation emerged that was European and Christian. Okay, moving on. Europe is our common home, and our ancestors' blood and bone lie in its soil. Again, another affirmation, but more interesting is further down. The so-called refugee crisis is an invasion. A war without bullets, taking place on the fields of rice, religion, sex, and morality. <laughs> no, no, this can't be right. They're fleeing a war-torn Syria. Okay, okay, I get it. But it's not like they're causing any harm to... I, I, I don't understand. Surely the leaders... Oh. Oh, no. Maybe the alt-right might have a point here? Family, a man and a woman in a loving relationship that produces offspring, is an essential, indispensable foundation for a healthy and functioning society. Statistically, yes it is. Moving on. Man is not a blank slate on which to be written, nor is he born a guileless noble savage. I, I am so glad they said this, you have no idea. What am I talking about? Well, the blank slate theory, or tabula rasa, suggests that human beings are born without thought or will, and all of that is taught. The age-old question of nature versus nurture, as it were, tabula rasa falls squarely on nurture. The danger is that if human beings are just liquid to take the shape of whatever container they are poured into, then who does the pouring? Vladimir Lenin had the concept of the new Soviet man. He recognized his utopian vision was impossible, as it could only be maintained if the very nature of man can be changed to conform to the requirements of his new order. Are you paying attention here, you guys? This means that he needs people to take the shape of his ideal society for his ideal society to work. Maybe that should have been his first clue that there was a problem? Well... The problem was not only that Lenin's new man was as fictional as his idea that communism would ever achieve anything except misery and death, 
but his failure to recognize that communism would ever achieve anything except misery and death as your reptilian overlords will find out humans are not pawns to be moved about on a chessboard they're individuals with autonomy and feelings and ambitions it goes without saying that tabula rasa isn't true at least not completely in some respects we are products of our environment but much of our personality such as our iq is genetic as found by kevin beaver criminologist at florida state university in tallahassee similarly a predisposition to addictive behavior such as drug abuse and alcoholism is believed to be genetic all of which is set once someone reaches adulthood put simply if lenin wants his new soviet man he must first make his soviet animal as for the question of the noble savage it idealizes primitive hunter-gatherer societies as enlightened people in harmony with each other in nature it is only on introduction with evil white european racists that they learn of violence and deceit this is seen in movies like james cameron's avatar but the truth is far more complex hunter-gatherer societies are brutal places with scarce food and in constant warfare with other tribes infanticide and child mortality was common as was disease parasites and death by predators generally crappy places to live which is why you should invest in amazonian huts today socialists lead by example i am so glad the alt-right recognizes these essential and easily overlooked truths 